In chapter 9, we're going to build on pretty much everything we learned in chapter 8. So chapter 8 was all about making, drawing Lewis structures and trying to figure out where electrons are in an atom and now, uh, in a molecule. And now we want to look at um, the shape. So Lewis structures don't tell anything about the shape, um, but the shape plays a lot, uh, a big role in the reactivity of the molecule, which you'll see definitely when you get to organic chemistry. So we want to be able to figure out um, you know how are these shapes determined and we're going to look at the bond angles so just because you have a central atom and two you know atoms on the side doesn't necessarily you'll get a mean you'll get a linear arrangement so co2 is linear but so2 which also has a central atom and two other atoms uh, is bent and then so3 is a central atom with with three other atoms that's trigonal planar but nh3 is a trigonal pyramid so we need to be able to explain these differences. And again, here's another one where we have a central atom with three atoms and uh, a different shape. This is called T-shape. So we're going to learn all these shapes. You're going to have to memorize a whole bunch of shapes. But we have to be able to look at these, um, a Lewis structure, try to figure out its electron domain, and then look at what the model, uh, what the shape actually looks like. So to do this, we're going to use VESPER. VESPER model stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. And so we're really focusing on the valence electrons, just like we did when we were drawing Lewis structures. And those electrons repel each other. And because they repel each other, they make the atoms occupy certain positions in space. So electrons repel each other. They're going to try to get as far away from each other as they possibly can. So if you had a central atom and then you had these two other atoms, right, the electrons are kind of in these bonds. Those are going to want to get as far away from each other as possible. If you had two of those, they're going to get 180 degrees. If you had three, they're going to get 120 degrees from each other. Four, you're going to get uh, a tetrahedral arrangement. And then um, you have, there we go. If you had five, there'll be, you know, 90 degrees and then 120. This is basically like a, a trigonal planar and then a linear thing kind of coming, coming down this way. Um, so we have to know these bond angles. Right, octahedral, and they're all 90 degrees from each other. Uh, so it depends on how many electron groups you have and, and where they're located. So they're going to try to get as far away from each other as possible. Um, so you need to be able to count up the number of electron domains, and those are electron pairs. They could be bonding, they could be non-bonding. So we're not considering just you know bonding electrons uh, when you're counting up the electron domains. But when you're looking at the overall shape of the molecule, you look at only the bonding, you know, where the where the bonding um, electrons are located. So the non-bonding ones are, are forcing all the atoms to occupy a certain uh, a certain space. So what constitutes an electron domain? Any single bond, um, any non-bonding, you know, lone pair electrons. And then if you have multiple bonds, if you have like a double bond or a triple bond, they count as one electron domain because those electrons are basically um, located between, they're stuck in between those two atoms. So let's do a really quick um, example of counting up the number of electron domains, because that's going to be fundamental in, in moving forward. So suppose we had just some central atom, A, A, and it had, I don't know, single bond, a single bond, and a double bond here. Right, how many electron domains do I have here? So a single bond counts as one, this counts as one, and a double bond counts as one. So I have one, two, three. I have three electron domains there. What if I added a lone pair? Now I have one, two, three, and then that lone pair counts as one. So that would be four electron domains. That one's four electron domains. Um, what if I had something like this guy? Right, I have a whole bunch here and here and here I'm only going to focus on the central atom so even though you have a whole bunch of electrons over here just focus on the central atom so I have one two three that's the three electron domains so remember any multiple bond is a single electron domain any um, single bond any multiple bond and multiple bond and any lone pair electrons pair of electrons that's going to be a single so this is one two three so we're going to do this a bunch we're going to we're going to draw the electron, um, the Lewis structure, and then we're going to figure out how many electron domains are, are in it. Again, electrons are negative, they repel each other, so they're going to occupy, um, they're going to try to get as far away from each other as possible. So the shape really does depend on the number of electron domains, so it's really important to be able to count those up. 
So in order to find the shape of the molecule, the, the molecular geometry, the first thing you're going to do is draw the Lewis, Lewis dot structures and then count the number of electron domains, determine the electron domain geometry, and then determine the molecular geometry. So you already know how to do step one. You already know how to draw the Lewis structures. Uh, the next thing to do is now we just learned how to count up the number of electron domains. And so then we need to assign them an electron domain geometry. So if you have two electron domains, they're going to get as far away from each other as possible. That's going to be 180 degrees, and that's we call that a linear electron domain. Linear. If you have three electron domains, and again, these could be bonding, these could be non-bonding. You're just looking at the number of electron domains. They could be lone pairs, they could be multiple bonds, they could be single bonds, whatever they are. That's your electron domain. If you have two of them, it's linear. If you have three, it's called trigonal planar. And if they're bonding, they'll be 120 um, degree bond angles. If it's tetrahedral, that means you have four. Um, so you might be thinking, oh, why is it not 90? You basically you're twisting them out of plane. If you only had one plane to work with, work in, they would be 90 degrees. But if you twist it a little bit, they get a little bit further um, away from each other. So these are kind of in the same plane, and then those two are on the same plane, and you get this tetrahedral arrangement. And the bond angles are 109.5, or the angles between those electron domains are approximately 109.5. If you had something like five, you would have three in one plane. So those would be 120 degrees from each other. Um, so it's like having a trigonal planar, right, like this guy, but then also a linear going up and down. And so in this direction, from here, 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 right, that's 90. But then in that plane, from here to the central atom to there, that's 120. So you have two sets of bond angles you have to remember for a trigonal bipyramid. Trigonal bipyramid. Trigonal means it has like a triangular base, and then it has a pyramid on top, and then a pyramid on the on the bottom. So it's a trigonal bipyramid. And then the last one, if you have six, it's called octahedral. Um, so you basically have this square, or a square bipyramid. It's is kind of what it looks like. You have a square there, and you have one on top, one on the bottom. They're all 90 degrees. Octahedral because if you were to like put in, you can kind of see this drawn in picture here. You would if you were to like draw in faces and made this like a it would turn into an oct octahedron. You made this like a geometric shape. It means it has four sides on the top, four on the bottom, or eight total. So you're not, it's, you may be looking at it going six. Why is it octa? <laughs> that should be like hexa. Um, it's, uh, you're not counting the number of um, electron domains. You have six electron domains. Uh, but if you were to put, you know, faces in there, it would be an octahedral. This is 90 degree angles there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to go from, you know, a, a tetrahedral geometry. If you removed one of these uh, and, and turned it from a bonding to a non-bonding atom right here, so that atom disappears, the shape looks different, right? So you, you had a tetrahedral, you had four electron domains, and if they're all bonding, it's tetrahedral. If you have three bonding and one non-bonding, do you see how the bonds, these bonds didn't move? This guy is still here, this guy is still there. That bond angle is still the same, but the shape is different now. Now you have a trigonal uh, pyramid, a trigonal pyramidal. And then if you got rid of another one, see how the bond angles don't really move. Now I just don't have an atom there. Now this is a uh, two, two sets of lone pairs. The bonds are still in the same places, but the shape looks different because I no longer have those atoms in there. Um, so that is a, that we call that one bent. So they're all from the same electron domain geometry, but the molecular geometry is different. So the electron domain geometry is usually not the same shape as the molecule if you have lone pairs. If you don't have lone pairs, then the, the electron domain geometry is the molecular geometry, like right here. I have all bonding electrons, so um, the, the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral, but so is the molecular. Uh, so molecular geometry is defined only by the, the atoms, the position of the atoms, of only the atoms. Um, so for example, CH4 and NH3 have the same electron geometry, they're both tetrahedral, or tetra, um, yeah, tetrahedral, but CH4 has all bonding and NH3 has three bonding and one non-bonding. So we'll look at this. They're, they're in the same electron domain geometry, but they have different molecular geometries. So within each electron domain, uh, there might be more than one molecular geometry, and we'll go we'll go step by step on how to figure out these. Uh, if only two atoms in a uh, are in the molecule, the mo molecule will be linear uh, no matter what the electron domain geometry is. So if you had something like um, C and something like this, right? You only have two atoms in here. This is going to be linear because two things. No, so you don't really have a central atom there. You just have. Um, you have two atoms. So usually we'll focus on the central atom. In this case, this is saying is if there's only two atoms, you only have a central one. It's just going to be linear.